Hello, in this video I will show you a very cool technique in order to track the motion of part of the shape in your After Effects project using motion tracking. This could be used in order to achieve a very awesome effect if you're for instance creating a label for a product that you are showcasing. Here, let me show you an example. As you can see, the shape in this case is just a straight line and one end of this line is attached to this text in the middle of the screen and the other end of this line is attached to this thing that is moving across the frame, which in this case is a camera lens. So I'm going to show you step by step how to recreate this effect inside After Effects because it's not trivial. So let's get started. All right, so we are here in After Effects and as you can see, this is my project. I only have this video clip right here. This is the video clip I was showing you before with a lens moving across the frame. I'm just performing this kind of a sliding motion with my camera. And what I want to do is I want to create the label for this stabilizer switch. So I want to attach this line to this on text of this switch on the on off stabilizer switch on this lens. And then I want to make the text which says image stabilization right here in the middle. So let's do that. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually track the motion of this lens. So we're going to start somewhere here when the on appears on the screen. And then we're going to go to our tracker. If you don't see this tracker right here, you can always go to window. And from here, select the tracker. You open the tracker. You set the motion source to be this clip. And then you need to click here and then go to track motion. This thing will appear on the screen. We're going to make it a little bit bigger and we're going to move it over to this on text. So a little bit bigger more in order to accommodate for the entire text. A little bit bigger here. Okay, this looks um, pretty good. And then we're just going to make sure that we have the position checked, only the position. We don't want to track the rotation and scale in this example. And then we're just going to hit play to track it. Okay, that's enough. Now I can just hit the stop button here. And then we have our tracking data. If I scrub through, you can see that the tracker is following this text perfectly. And normally with the tracking data like this, we would just create a new null object inside After Effects, then apply this tracking to this null object, then pick with some kind of layer that we want to attach to this tracking data into this null object. And that way we can track this stuff inside After Effects using this tracking data. And if any of that, what I just said, doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry, we're gonna go over in detail. But I just wanted to mention that this, we are not going to take the standard approach with tracking. We are going to do something else here. First, we're gonna create the shape. So let's create the shape. So to create this shape, you're going back to our composition right here, then click somewhere in the empty space to deselect this layer, then go over to the pen tool, and let's draw our line. So we're going to start somewhere here. It doesn't need to be perfectly in the spot that we want the line to go from. Somewhere here and then to the middle of the frame. Let's say here. Okay, if we deselect, we see that we have this line and then let's create the text. So I'm just going to create the text that says image stabilization. I'm going to move this text using the hand tool. Okay, this looks good. And now if I scrub through, you can see that the shape and the text stay in place. And this is obviously not what we want. But right now, here's when the magic happens. We are going to create two null objects for the beginning of the path and the ending of the path. So we're gonna do that by executing a clever script that After Effects has written for us. So to do that, we need to go to the window menu and then open the create nulls from paths.jsx. This will open up this small window here, which has three buttons. Points follow nulls, nulls follow points and trace path. We are interested in this third option because we want to create null objects and we want to make sure that the points in our shape are following the nulls. So in order to execute this, we need to actually select the shape that we want to apply this to. So in order to do it, we go into the shape layer, we need to expand that, expand the contents, expand the shape one, expand the path one, and then click on the path here. Don't click on the stopwatch, just on the path. And with this selected, we're going to hit the points follow nulls and it created two null objects, the top one and the bottom one. And if I select the top one, for instance, and go to transform and move this around using position, 
you can see that the shape is changing with regards to the position of this null object. And this is exactly what we want because now we can just apply the tracking data that we already have to one of those null objects in order to make sure that one end of this path is following the lens that is moving around and the other one stays in place. So let's do that. Okay, so let's rename those nulls to make it more clear. So we're gonna name this top null and we're gonna name this bottom null so that we know that we need to attach the tracking data to this top null. And in order to do that, we need to go back here, select the layer that we have the tracking data from. Then we need to go to the tracker again. So collapse this, collapse this. We have the tracker. Okay, we're going to edit target. And then here we need to select the top null. Okay, and then before we apply, actually, we need to do one more thing because if we applied it like this, then the top end of the path would be anchored exactly in the middle of this on text. And this is not what we want, probably. We wanted to make it this offset vertically somewhere around here, just laying a little bit on the bottom of this on text. So in order to do it, we need to expand this here. Then we need to expand the motion trackers, tracker one, track point one, and right here we have an attached offset. And if I grab this number, this is the vertical offset, you can see this little cross is moving up and down. And this is exactly when the line will be attached to when we apply this tracking data to this null object. So I'm gonna offset it just around here. I think it should look pretty good. And then we're going to apply our tracking data to this null object that we previously set. Okay, and right here, if I go back, we are on our composition. You can see if I'm scrubbing through, then the line is following this on text, the top end of the line, but the bottom end of the line is staying at the image stabilization text, which looks pretty good already. And by now the hardest part is already done, but we are going to add a little bit of cherries on top to make it more professional, more finesse. We're going to add a little bit of fading in and fading out animation to the text, and we're going to animate the length of the shape so it appears that it's sort of like, you know, like throwing a rope from one place, attaching it to the text, and then the rope is detaching, and it sort of retracts back to this on text on the lens. So let's do that. Okay, so let's go to the beginning of our tracking data so we can expand this, and that way we can see where the keyframe started. The first one is right here. And then the first thing that I want to do is I want to animate the opacity of this image stabilization text. So I'm just expanding this, transform, opacity. I'm gonna set keyframes here, 0%. Then I'm gonna go forward by exactly 10 frames. I'm holding command shift keys on my Mac and the right arrow. I have just advanced 10 frames. Then I'm gonna go with the opacity to 100%. I'm gonna make sure that the keyframes are nice and smooth using easing. So easy is out on the first keyframe, easy is in on the second keyframe. And then we go on to the end. So let's expand this again. This is the end of our tracking data. So now we are again to 0%, but we need to go back 10 frames again and set 100 again here so it fades out. Then let's apply the easing. And as you can see, the text is appearing and then disappearing. And the last thing to do is to add the animation to this line so it sort of expands from the on text to the text and then it retracts back. So let's go to this keyframe. We can click this icon to go to this keyframe. And then we are going to add a very cool effect to our shape. So instead of fiddling with the mask, we are going to apply an effect called trim paths. So we need to expand this again and we need to select our path again and then go up here to this add and this little play button, click on this and select trim paths. And what it does is that we have a trim path. We can animate this start and end. And if I, for instance, go with the end to like 50%, you can see here that the line is sort of shortened by 50%. It starts here. So this is the starting position and it ends here. So this is the ending position because this is the first point that I clicked. And this is the second point that I clicked. So we can animate this end in order to make this shape sort of prolong and then retract. So let's do that. So we are on the first keyframe. We need to enable keyframes for the end, set 0% here, then advance to the second keyframe by clicking this button. Then we're going to set 100% here. We're gonna add the easing again. So right click, easy ease out. Right click here, easy ease in. Then let's go to the ending. So we can click here. And again, add another keyframe by clicking this button and then go to the last keyframe and set 0% here. And the last thing, of course, is the easing again. So again, easy ease out and easy ease in. 
And that is pretty much it. The last thing that I want to add here is because this shape is moving, I want to enable motion blur for this layer. So I'm just clicking on this little rectangle right here to enable motion blur. And then let's play back our final animation. Let's maybe hide those nulls so we don't need to see them. And let's play it back. It extends and then it retracts and it looks pretty awesome. So what do you think about the final effect? I think it looks pretty awesome and once I figured this out I started using it in more and more of my videos because I really like how it looks because I'm not moving the text so you can read the text clearly it doesn't move around with the object but I'm just moving around a sort of pointer from the object that I want to label to this text that is the actual label of this text. If you like this video make sure to leave it a thumbs up down below i would really appreciate that also comment down below if you have any questions if any part of the video was confusing to you i pretty much answer every single comment i get on youtube and also consider subscribing to my channel of course because i upload a lot of videos like this i pretty much upload new videos every single week and browse through my channel i already have a bunch of tutorials the things that i cover on my channel are all things related to photography and filmmaking post-processing photoshop premiere pro after effects so check it out you probably will find something interesting in there already but like i said subscribe for more videos and that's it for now have a good day see you next time and bye bye